Hey, it's Luke. Today on Out of Darts, I'm going to show you how to rewire your LiPo battery to the connector of your choice. Choice. To do this modification and this rewire, you're going to need safety glasses, the connector you want to rewire, some heat shrink, solder, wire strippers or an X-Acto knife, snips are handy, and a soldering iron of your choice. Today, I'm actually going to play around with this uh, plug-in XT60 direct DC soldering iron because I want to I've been putting it through its paces seeing how well it works first let's go over all the different types of connectors that are generally out there this is a Dean's connector it is a decent connector but because the pins are exposed it's not as safe as an XT60 this is a JST connector it is common on a lot of smaller batteries, I generally replace it to an XT60 just to make sure my entire fleet is compatible. This is a Tamiya connector and a Tamiya Mini. I don't recommend either of these connectors. Uh, there are lots of little variants, such as an MT. This is an MT30, MT60. This actually has three different wires in it. We've used these for Jupiter and other things in the past. Ultimately, the XT60 is by far the most common and most popular. It is what I would recommend for all blasters. There's nothing wrong with an XT30. It has plenty of power um, and current available. Uh, the rating XT30 actually means 30 amps continuous, so it is plenty high for most Nerf applications. However, you'll find that most people in the hobby are using a good old XT60, so that's what we're going to cover today. We're going to take this pack the way it came from Hobby King, because this is not one of my custom packs, and we are going to replace it with the XT60. So diving right in, there are a couple safety things here. As you're working with cutting tools around a battery, you would never want to puncture this. Exposing the cells to oxygen can cause uh, explosions or fire very uh, dangerous so be really careful when you're cutting anytime you're installing a connector like this it's no different than doing your blaster side which looks like this and you always want to make sure that this is your battery side this is your blaster side that way there are no exposed pins if you were to wire your battery using this side you would then have uh, pins that could connect a piece of metal or something and short the pack out shorting the pack out is very dangerous down in the description there is a link to our light bulb safety guide Whenever you're going to cut a lipo, I'm going to make this one fairly short because I like to make my leads um, reasonably short. I'm not going to worry about that warranty sticker today. You're always going to want to cut one lead at a time and solder that separately. So I think probably about there is good. So we will um, go ahead and cut that. Toss a piece of heat shrink on there. So I'm going to pre-tin this connection. You'll notice I have not tinned the tinned or cut the other side, and that is intentional. XT60 connectors are generally always marked if they are of good quality. The flat side is always the positive, and the rounded side is the negative. You can see there's a little minus and a little plus here. One little trick I like to do is take a sacrificial connector and use it as a form or a holder. This both helps dissipating heat and it also helps keep the shape of the actual component in the case that your soldering skills are not super solid and you end up using more heat than necessary. This will help stop bending the uh, uh, connectors. And you can simply use your helping hands to pin it on one side here and then uh, the other helping hand to hold this. So due to the closure, I have some of my parts at home and some at the w warehouse. Unfortunately, I'm missing a lot of things right now. So I will use this helping little jig here. This is totally not necessary, but essentially it's just a fancy way of holding this. Again, I would use this little sacrificial connector to clamp onto. That way, if it, anything gets damaged, it's that part. So next, I'm going to uh, take solder and I'm going to flow solder into both, both terminals here. Now I have, I'm using, of course, lead-free solder, as I always use. We never use leaded solder around here due to the carcinogenic properties. Fill the cup completely so that you know it's getting all the way down inside. And then again, this is our negative side, and then we're going to flux and get both the connector and the other part. This is a little tricky to do and show. You want to make sure that your wire gets all the way down in. I would generally recommend using helping hands for this, but now as soon as I've finished that connection, 
I am going to go ahead and push my heat shrink on, which I have actually caused a little too much heat in there, so it's shrunk a little more than I wanted to, but you're gonna twist and put your heat shrink on. And this is one of the few times where I will heat shrink as I go along. I truly get a ton of these emails asking how to rewire these and um, what to do to rewire them, to, whether it's people wanting to shorten them or whatever. And they're really, it's totally safe to do if you're doing it in this method. Where people get into trouble is when they go to snip the leads and they snip both, then you're arcing and, and um, shorting out your battery. Or if you don't do one side at a time, you can short it out as you're working on it. So we're ready to do the next side. We're gonna slide that heat shrink on. We pretend that the cup is filled and we're just gonna go ahead I'm gonna grab a tiny bit of fresh solder to help flux this in place. And then we're gonna slide that all the way in there, make sure the entire cup has fluxed. And then if you're real quick, you can slide your heat shrink down there and get it pre-shrunk partially by the uh, residual heat there. And then we'll go ahead and And there we have it, we have successfully swapped this lead. One little last touch that I like to do, and this will depend on the kind of connector you use, there are some that have some nice coverings you can put on, but I like to stretch a piece of the larger heat shrink that I sell and uh, put this over the connector. This is a little bit of additional insulation, strain relief, and I just think it looks nice. And uh, it's my buddy John that got me started doing these. So I tend to do this. And if you know you did a little bit more of a professional job than I did, you might have left these heat shrinks a little shorter. That way they'd just tuck under that tail. But ultimately, there we've got a rewired pack. You should never have to mess with this uh, balance lead there. You're only changing the primary plug. Hope that was helpful. I'm going to do a lot more of these little mini tutorials. And let me know what you think in the comments. If there's any questions, I'll try to jump down there to answer them. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm out of darts.